we're going to talk about corking. How to select your corks, which wines they're going to be ma best matched with, and what different types of corking mechanisms you can use to help bottle your wine. When we think about corking a bottle of wine, it's not just as simple as throwing a cork in top of a bottle and letting it be. There's actually a strategy that's involved. One of the things you want to think about is how long do you want to age the wine. The longer you want to age the wine, the longer the cork should be. These corks here are one and three quarters inches tall, and they're rated for as long as a 10-year shelf life. These shorter ones are only one and a half inches tall, and they're rated for a wine that's going to be consumed much quicker, say two to three years. Not only are they different as far as the height goes, but also regarding the circumference. Now, these, most all of these corks are what we call in the industry a number nine cork. They're wider in circumference than these, which are number eights. You can even see the difference. The way bottles are made nowadays, 90%, probably even more, are made to take the number nine corks. But there are some corks uh, that are made smaller to fit the smaller bottles. It all depends on the neck of the bottle. What I usually do when I cork, I generally say, all right, I know I'm going to need 30 corks to bottle a batch of wine. Why not go ahead and get 30 corks of the number nine size, but also get about three or four of the number eights just in case you're bottling uh, wine in a bottle that has a neck that's smaller than you anticipate. We'll talk about that later when we get to the bottling stage. We'll be demonstrating three different corkers uh, for you. Corkers are all going to do the same thing regardless of their design. They're built so that they can compress the outside of the cork to make it small enough to go into the neck of the bottle. This first one that we're going to show you is called the Portuguese hand corker. It's really nice because it's easy on the budget and it's relatively simple to use. It just uses this plunger to push the cork into the bottle. Let me show you how we load the cork in there. You see we have a chamber here and all we have to do is take our cork, push it right in here and now we're ready to bottle. Let me demonstrate how to bottle using the Portuguese hand corker. If you're using just one person, yourself, to bottle, then you'll need to set the bottle on the floor. This is to help keep the bottle stable and then it won't get knocked over. What I do, I kind of put it between my feet like this so that it holds the bottom. Now my cork is already loaded here. I put the lip of the corker on top of the bottle, slowly bring it down until it's engaged and I can feel that the pressure, and then I do it in one swift motion using the weight of my body to push the cork in. Very easy. The next corker we want to demonstrate is the Portuguese floor corker. You'll be using this if you are bottling a higher volume of wine. Anything more than two or three kits a year, believe me, your back will thank you if you get a floor corker. So let me show you how the iris works. This is the iris here. This is the part that will squeeze the cork. Watch how I, whenever I pull the handle down, the iris gets smaller. You see that? That's how it compresses the cork and how it works. To demonstrate, let me show you a little bit more about how this floor corker works. You notice that this is a spring-loaded base. This is built like this so that it can adjust to any size bottle that you're using during corking. You also have this spot right here. This is your depth adjustment screw. This is how you can adjust how deep the cork goes into the neck of the bottle. All right, so here we go. The first thing we want to do is load the bottle in the corker. Get it set so that the, that the neck is pointed directly underneath where the iris is. Next, take your cork, put it right inside, and I usually put my foot on the base just to hold it steady, and then you come in with one swift movement, down like that, and you're corked. The last corker we want to demonstrate is the Italian floor corker. This one is a little more expensive than the Portuguese floor corker we just showed you, but I like it because it's a little bit taller, easier to use, you won't have to bend over quite as much, and it's easier to put pressure on it. Also, the iris is made of aluminum, so it's more, more durable than the nylon one of the Portuguese. The mechanism is the same. You still have the spring-loaded spot where we put our bottle. We still load the cork in the same way. Very easy. We want to show you what can happen if you make a mistake during the corking process. You can either cork it short and leave a bit hanging out like this one here, or you can cork it a bit too deep 
and you can see where the cork is down inside the neck of the bottle, which will make it harder to get the cork out. For this one, even though it's probably going to be sealed okay, do you really want to take a chance with that? The best thing to do is to go ahead and just pull this cork out, make your adjustment on the corker, and either if you're using a hand corker, go at it in one fell swoop, one quick uh, movement will get the cork seated properly, or if you're using a floor corker, make sure you adjust the, the depth gauge. One of the reasons that you don't want to have a recessed cork inside the neck of your bottle like this is that it provides the perfect environment for mold to grow. Depending on where you're storing your wine bottles, if it's in a place that has a lot of moisture, let's say it's in a basement that doesn't have a dehumidifier in it, then the mold will want to grow in this recessed area here. So you've got a choice to make if you've corked too deep. You can either recork or you can cover it with something like wax. If you dip this in wax, that will take care of this recessed cork problem.